Hi guys, the Mental Maniac back again. And, um, yeah. The album I've been wanting the most, or waiting for and excited for the most, is finally here. And that is See You in Hell by Grim Reaper. I've been waiting quite a while for this album. Um, pretty much, I guess, mm, the entire month, uh, last month. Um, and it, and it didn't arrive, but it arrived today. So, <laughs> I, uh, took it up to my room and listened to it. And now I'm ready to review it for you guys. Um, and, uh, yes, as you can see, this is signed by Steve Grimmett himself. Um, as you can see, there's his autograph. Oh, and yeah, it's autographed on the actual, uh, uh booklet, not the, uh, case. So, it won't, so, uh, it's autographed on the, uh, booklet, not the case. Uh, you have no problem of accidentally smearing it. Um, but yeah. So, this was released, originally released in, uh, the UK in 1983. And released in, uh, the USA and I think most other countries in 1984. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of confused about that because I, well, I know, I'm not confused with the fact that it was released originally in, in the UK in 1983. But, this is a Japanese pressing, and all it says is 1983. Um, as you can see, uh, where is it? Hold on. Ah, right here. It says 1983, but this is a, a Japanese pressing. So, maybe it was also released in Japan, in, uh, originally released in Japan in 1983. But, uh, Japan and, um, UK, but maybe the rest of the world, uh, didn't see a release for it until 84. Who knows? Um, but yeah, so yeah, this is a, Jap a Japanese pressing. Um, I couldn't really find any other pressings, I mean, any other in any sort of good condition. Um, oh, actually, on Amazon, there was, like, mint, they were selling it mint condition, although it was $900, and yeah, no. Um, oh, 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 almost dropped it, but, uh, yeah, there is the autograph, and, um, oh, yeah, and then, uh, it's all in Japanese, except, well, it's all in Japanese here, but, uh, then you have the, uh, English lyrics, so, you get both, um, but, yeah. Um, no pictures of the band member or anything, band members or anything. Um, which is kind of disappointing. I would, I would like to see pictures of band members back from back in the day. Oh, that, that didn't go in right. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Oh, 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 there we go. Yeah, I'm probably n n are rarely going to take the uh, pamphlet out just because it has the autograph on it. Um, but I just want to show you guys the inside. Um, but yeah, so... The album opens with, of course, the title track, uh, the first song I ever heard by the band, uh, even before I bought the album, uh, and, oh my god, this is what made me fall in love with, uh, the band and this album. Uh, the title track is just, it gets you right away with that riff. Uh, and then Steve Grimmett's voice is amazing. Uh, he does um, a really perfect balance of high high register and lower register. Um, put this over here for a second. Um, he he does a really uh, good balance. Um, not mostly highs and not mostly lows. I mean, just a really awesome, like a really good balance between uh, his uh, register of vocals. Um. And the, and the guitar work is amazing, the drums are amazing, everything is great about this song. No wonder why they put it as, not only, like, yeah, of course they put it as a track, but not, it's, it's, it's no wonder why they put it as, um, the opening track. It just gets you hooked, gets you hooked and wanting, and you want to listen to the rest of the album to see what's next. Um, but yeah, it's just an amazing song. It's a song that, um, it's a song that gets stuck in your head, but in a good way. Like, um... It gets stuck in your head, but in a good way. Like, say you like you've heard this song, right? 
But then, like, a couple days later, say you're at the grocery store or something, you're just buying whatever you need to buy. Then all of a sudden, that rift kicks in in your brain. And then Steve Grimm's voice, like, it's a song that gets stuck in your head, but you want it to get stuck in your head. And, like, it, it, I don't know, it's just one of those perfect songs. Um, definitely up there, and now one of my favorite songs of all time. If not my favorite, yeah, it might replace The Trooper by Iron Maiden as my favorite, but I don't know quite yet. I haven't really decided. Um, but the next song, hold on, I have to, take a, I have to open this up because, uh, there, oh, wait, no, never mind. Uh, the track listing is actually on the back. Um, uh, anyway, so, um, next is Dead on Arrival. This one, even though... I do like the instrument work on this. Steve Grimmett's vocals are just odd. Because, unlike on uh, the title track, and the, uh, uh, which is the opening track as well, this one, Dead on Arrival, his vocals are odd. Like, he does the high vocals, right? He does the really high register vocals. But he does it for the entirety of the song to the point where, like, you can't really understand what he's saying. Um, like, I mean, even in uh, uh, the title track, uh, you, even though when he does the high registers, you can still hear, you can still make out what he's saying. Where in this one, he does high registers, but very oddly, like I said, like throughout the entire song, and it's just a weird, like you can't really understand what he's saying that much. But other than that weird sort of, I don't know, hiccup in the uh, um, song, like everything else about the song is pretty good. I mean, it's no, that's, I mean, I, I don't know, it, it's just that weird sort of, way he, the way he does his vocal, delivers his vocals in the song is just weird. But, I mean, musically it's okay. Alright, what's next? Um, Liar. Okay, this one's a little better. Um, still not a great song, but it, it's an okay song. Um, I don't know, I, uh. <laughs> this song is, I mean, it's really hard, because it's in between, Liar is in between one song that uh, is very not so good in terms of vocals, and then a song, which I'll get to next, which I'll play my thoughts on, but yeah, it's just a weird song, I mean, I do like it, but it's placed oddly uh, in the uh, track listing, um, I do think it's sort of out of place, I think it would have been better uh, either earlier on in the track listing or later on, but I mean, yeah, it, it's good. It's a good song. Liar's a good overall. Liar's a good song, but it's just it feels like it shouldn't be in that particular section of the track listing. Um, but yeah, uh, next song, Wrath of the Ripper. Okay. Oh, Ripper or Reaper? Oh, it is Ripper. Okay, I guess it's about um uh, the um. The serial killer, um, Jack the Ripper. Um, this one I do really like, although nothing will be the Judas Priest song, The Ripper, uh, in terms of a song that's based off of Jack the Ripper. But this one's still really, really good. Um, it's, it's not what you think, it's not super heavy. Like, none of this, none of these songs on this album is, like, super heavy. Although, you could argue that, uh, the last song is slightly more heavy than the rest. But it's still really good. I do really enjoy it. Um, next up is, uh, what was it? Oh yeah. Now or Never. This one's pretty good. I do like it. Um, it's, re it's really weird because, um, at first I thought it said Die or Never. I don't know. I just glanced at it and was like, that doesn't sound like, proper English, I or never. But I looked at it again, it was like, I don't know. I just thought it was very funny how I uh, misread it the first time. Anyway, the song's really good. Um, it's definitely um, one of the better songs on the album. Um, but I don't really have much to say about it. Um, Run For Your Life is pretty good. Um, slightly generic sounding in terms of heavy metal, but... It's 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 still really good. Um, not too generic to the point where I don't like it. It's still pretty good. Um, the show must go on. Definitely the worst song on the album. 
I normally don't like ballads, and this is another example. I just it's about it's the ballad of the album, and I just don't like it. I don't like ballads. It's just not my thing. Um, for majority of majority of cases, and uh, yeah, this is one another um majority case where I just don't like this ballad. And um, ballads aren't my thing. I mean, it's it's a good song. It's just not my cup of tea. But yeah, and the last song, um, all hell let loose. Definitely the, uh, I'd say the most sinister sounding song on the album. I mean, it's not super heavy, but it is definitely, compared to the rest of the songs, it is the heaviest. And definitely the most sinister sounding. Um, honestly, this one kind of sounds, like, All Hell Let Loose, let, uh, All Hell Let Loose kind of sounds like a Judas Priest song, in my opinion. Like, it really does. It sounds like, like, a um, early 80s Judas, early to mid 80s Judas Priest song. Uh, maybe not in the vocals so much, but just the uh, um, just the way the song is presented in terms of like everything musically, not vocally. But um, yeah, I just it's I love it. I mean, I guess mainly because it is the heavier song on the uh, album, and because it reminds me of like a Judas Priest song that I guess would be on like uh, 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 not Scream Revenge, uh. Ju uh I'm stumbling my words. I'm so sorry. It reminds me of a, so a Judas Priest song that would be on like uh, um, Defenders of the Faith, or maybe even um, Painkiller. Nah, maybe not Painkiller, but definitely something that would be on Judas uh, uh, Defenders of the Faith. I, I don't know. I'm so sorry. I'm stumbling my words. Um, anyway, but uh, overall, a really good album. Uh, it does have some songs that I think are just meh. Like, I'd say the, the uh, probably the, my top three favorite, not in any particular order, I guess, are uh, See You in Hell, um, Wrath of the Ripper, and um, All Hell Let Loose. Uh, the only songs I think are that are very weak are uh, Dead on Arrival in The Show Must Go On, um, and then Run... Run for Your Life and uh, Liar are okay. Um, but yeah, so overall, I'm going to give this album... Uh, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Um, I do think... Uh, I, I will let this one slide. I, I was like thinking maybe giving this 6, but... I mean, for the title track alone, like, title track and then the ending track alone... Like, those songs are just so good. I'm mean, not to say that other songs, other certain songs on the album aren't, aren't good, but those particular songs are so good that they make the album. Um, I do think that, uh, if I, I don't know, I just, if I were to take a guess, I would say they got, uh, slightly better later on. Um, not to say that this album isn't good, but I do think, uh, this is definitely their starting point to the point where they aren't like, at their peak just yet, but, um, they're definitely getting there, um, but, yeah, this is just a really good album overall, um, I honestly don't understand why this band has been forgotten about, I mean, yeah, they haven't made, te they haven't technically made an album since 1987, I mean, there's a newer album that was released, I think, in 20. 16, but it, well, it, 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 it's not really the same band, I mean, it, it's called, um, Steve Grimmett's Grim Reaper, instead of just Grim Reaper, and the only, uh, original member is Steve Grimmett himself, um, but yeah, that, I don't, that album doesn't really count as a Grim Reaper album, um, it, it definitely doesn't, like, I have heard it, doesn't sound anything like this album, um, and I've heard it doesn't sound anything like um, the other two. Oh yeah, there are three albums by Grim Reaper. There's uh, this one, See You in Hell, which is their first. Um, their second one, I think, is called Fear No Evil. And the third one is Rock You to Hell. Which I have heard the title track for that one, I do. And that's kind of what um, uh, sort of made me want to get that album next. Um, yeah, I already ordered uh, Rock You to Hell. But um, it's not coming till sometime in September. But, uh, yeah, I just don't understand why this band is completely, almost completely forgot about. Like, you, like, their albums are extremely hard to find. Like, 
I don't know, especially on CD. I mean, yeah, vinyls are bigger now, more than CD is now, but still, I don't understand, like, I mean, luckily, like, if just, if people, are, like, if at any, at any point, like, the CDs and vinyls, like, are completely out, like, you can't find them anymore, luckily, iTunes has, um, I don't know, I know iTunes has, uh, the first album, but I don't know if they have any of the, any of the other ones, but, um, yeah, it's just a great, a uh, sounding album, especially for the early 80s, or mid 80s? No, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if mid like 1983 counts as mid 80s, or uh, you don't count mid 80s until 84. Nah, I'm gonna count it as mid 80s because I guess early 80s would be 1980, 1981, 80, and 82. I don't know, but um, yeah, overall, a really good album. Definitely not a great album, but it does. Uh, it is really, really good. Alright, so, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.